Cal, we're here to talk about the Canada-UK Trade Continuity Agreement uh, to replace essentially uh, almost the same terms and conditions as Canada has in the Canadian-European Trade Agreement with the UK because the UK, of course, is no longer part of the European Union. So what this continuity agreement does is it maintains the terms and conditions largely of CETA, uh, but it made sure that we have stability and continuity to be able to continue with those trade agreements with the UK. What I would argue, though, is that this is the floor. This should be the minimum requirement of our relationship with the UK from a trade perspective going forward, and it should be viewed as barely the starting point. My colleagues today have spent a great deal of time talking about the delays, the lack of consultation, and all of the things that have challenged us getting to this point in the agreement and leaving us behind the power curve with a trade continuity agreement. But what I would like to talk about is I'd like to move beyond this agreement and talk about how we absolutely must make broadening and expanding our trade relationship with the UK a priority. First, Canadians need this government to provide a plan with defined timelines to replace this continuity agreement, which is supposed to expire in a year, with a comprehensive Canada-UK trade agreement. And secondly, Canadians absolutely need this government to facilitate, support, and coordinate the increase of our trade with the UK. A trade agreement is merely the beginning. We actually need further action to ensure that the agreement is leveraged and actual trade results from it. Now, even before COVID, we saw that the global economic balance of power was fundamentally changing. With economic power being used by some countries as a mechanism to increase their political power and strategic interests. Trade has been used as a weapon to influence behavior, and we have only to look to some of the things that the Chinese People Republic of China have done with Canada in terms of our soybean, canola, pork, and ginseng trade exports, where they have frustrated the process introducing non-tariffed trade barriers, mitigating our ability to leverage those exports and having a distinct disadvantage on our economic outlook. Or the devastating effect that the same that China has brought on Australia by its embargo of critical Australian exports, which undermined Australia's economic stability and during COVID. So we need to be wary of trade with some of our partners being used as a weapon. And after COVID, we will need stable, dependable, robust trade. It will be critical for Canada as some countries will race to gain even greater strategic advantage in recovery. The key to defending against those who would seek to use trade as a weapon and secure our recovery is to minimize our vulnerabilities and diversify and balance our trade, placing greater emphasis on relationships with countries that share our values, our defense and security priorities, and our unwavering respect for the rule of law. That's why our trade with the UK must be a priority. UK is Canada's fifth largest trading partner behind the US, EU, China, Mexico, and Japan. We export considerably more to the UK than we import. And, but of the 19.8 billion that we export, over 64% of it is gold. And so we only represent 
1.98% of the UK's exports. So there's lots of opportunity for us to expand our exports and imports to the UK. But with our exports being significantly more than our imports, one could argue that we need the UK to buy from us more than they need us to sell to them. So that's the downside. It makes us vulnerable, but the upside is that there's a great opportunity to expand and mitigate that. So while the focus of this government at the moment and our country must be on vaccine acquisition and distribution, it is not the only thing that we need to be focused on. And I know that we're capable of doing more than one thing at once. We need to prepare, we need to leverage our current trade opportunities, and we need to broaden them with the UK. First of all, we need to start by developing a comprehensive plan. And we need to include the provinces, we need to include businesses, and we need to ask for broad consultation, and we need to identify what those core capabilities are there where we can use the trade agreement that we have right now and broaden it. We need to basically uh, ensure that the government pays, plays a very key role in facilitating and supporting businesses as they expand into those new markets. Uh, we absolutely need a dedicated minister of international trade. We need more trade representatives who are focused on all regions of the UK and Northern Ireland. We need to ensure that we have dedicated programs and infrastructure to support and facilitate Canadian businesses to understand where the opportunities are in those markets. We have a trade agreement. We need to find and figure out how we're going to leverage that trade agreement to turn it into real jobs and business opportunities. And it doesn't happen without effort. It's something that we need to focus on now and we need to have key dedicated government, provincial, and uh, industry representatives to be able to get there. Also, we need to start working on negotiating the key areas of the next comprehensive agreement. Some of the things that have been put forward that are missing from this agreement, dispute resolution framework, we need to be able, even though we're great friends with the UK, we need to have a comprehensive structure that tells us how these things are going to be worked out if we were ever to find ourselves in a dispute situation. We do need to jointly address how we would deal with non-tariff trade barriers. Perhaps we need to think in terms of economic alliances the same way that we look at defense and security alliances. Perhaps that we need to unite when one adversary is not abiding by trade agreements when we have trade agreements with other people. And that gives us the ability to have a greater influence to change uh, and alter that behavior. Perhaps we also need terms to address potential nationalistic and centric policies. We've seen, yes, we're in an emergency, and we've seen countries uh, invoke their Defense Production Act, but with us largely dependent on international global supply chains, perhaps we need to look at broadening and and thinking about in advance how we would mitigate those by America or if there were ever a by UK type policy. Could Canada be included as that part of that umbrella with the UK and, uh, and address it in that manner? Regulatory alignment for existing areas, like health, perhaps vaccines, and uh, where we would look at the process that the UK goes through to approve and monitor uh, a vaccine. And perhaps rather than us having to do it again ourselves because we were part of it or jointly reviewed it or agreed to the same regulatory conditions, we would be able to facilitate it 
faster in our country because we have shared regulatory alignment that we have negotiated in advance. Streamlining for businesses and professionals that want to do things. Or emerging... Uh, well, members, time is up um, and should be able to... Yeah, I know the time just flies by when... <laughs> And so I'm sure that she'll be able to add during questions and comments. Christian, is 